Hello friends, I am Nurse Meg from nursemegrn.com. This is a very highly requested video. I've made a couple TikToks about this, but now I wanna make a YouTube video because I can like speak for a little bit longer and then get a little bit more detailed and then we can have like discussions in the comments. So this video is, as you saw from the thumbnail, EKGs made easy. Now I'm a cardiac nurse. I've worked pretty much in every department, but I always go back to cardiac and tele floors. I just, I love it and it was where I started and I think that's kind of where we all gravitate towards. Wherever you started, you kind of end up there and you like that kind of department. I love cardiac, I love rhythms, I love interpreting rhythms, I love EKGs. I'm trying to say that I'm here to help you and I'm very well qualified. <laughs> all right, so um, let's get started. I'm going to actually be reading from my book uh, the New Nurse Survival Guide, Resources for Registered Nurses. I'm gonna talk quick EKG reading and interpretation and how to really get the foundations of that. Now obviously there's some more complicated things like blocks and things like that and you really have to see it over and over. So my suggestion to you is to make flashcards. I think that is the very best way to learn EKGs and learn what they look like is make flashcards and look at them over and over. Um, once you're working and you watch the monitors and you see rhythms over and over, I promise you they're gonna get stuck in your head. There's only a couple of options, okay? There's not hundreds of different types of rhythms. There's only a few, okay guys? So don't be intimidated. Put that aside. That's your hurdle number one is don't be intimidated and say, if they can get it, I can get it. If I can get it, you can get it because I am not an academic. So let's get started. I have uh, two really quick graphics for you that I'm going to share with you within this video. And we're gonna start with quick EKG reading. We're gonna look at the actual QRS um, rhythm, you know, the thing that everybody gets tattooed on them. And we're gonna break it down and I'm gonna teach you uh, what each little interval and thing represents. And also um, just how to count the rate and things like that. Uh, so I'm gonna look away, I'm gonna look at the graph, okay? So um, the first little blip is gonna be the P wave um, or the P to the R interval. The P to the R interval really represents time um, and it should be a certain amount of time and it's um, when the atrium um, is depolarized and the ventricles are depolarized. Um, so it should be a certain amount of time. It's 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. If it's longer, then we have a problem in like the electrical conductivity of the heart, the atrial depolarization. Um, now the next little dip is the Q, and then the R, and then the S. So the Q is what um, is like the little bottom blip. R is that top of the V, and then the little bottom blip is the S. The S should be lower than the Q. Um, and that's the ventricle depolarization, um, the QRS duration. And the QRS should always be less than 0.12, so that is the seconds that it takes for the ventricles to depolarize, depolarize and the electrical conductivity to go um, to the ventricles. So it's essentially P is like, atrium and then the QRS is like ventricle and then it's like recovery <laughs> if that makes any sense uh, I hope my you know atria ventricle you know the atriums are like the top little chambers of the heart and the ventricles the bottom chambers right I hope you know that much I hope I don't have to go too too uh, basic I hope you know that much um, but it's really like the conductivity the nodes that go from the top of the heart through the atrium and then through the ventricle so there's a little node or a little like little electrical box, let's call it, and it st there's one at the top of the heart, and then it goes to like the middle of the heart where the ventricles stop, and then it releases there. So if that duration for the electrical impulse to go from the top of the muscle to the bottom of the muscle is delayed, or if there's any um, issues there, then the QRS duration, or the little boop in the EKG, will be longer, will be elongated, which is not great. Um, and then the ventricle repolarization is um, the little like T, the little blue, blue, blue. Some people say there's a T U wave, really just the T, worry about it. Now the Q, remember was that first blip and the QT interval, so the time from the Q, blue, repolarization 
should be 0.36 to 0.44 seconds. So these are fractions of a second, because remember your heart's going boom, 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 But we measure these um, on an EKG because we wanna make sure um, that the chambers are uh, behaving correctly, that there is atrium, ventricle, atrium, ventricle, and it's not like atrium, atrium, ventricle. <laughs> um, so yes, um, now when you get a six second strip, um, you're gonna see all those like little QR, 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 you count the R's in a six second strip and that's how, what the heart rate is, you multiply it by 10. So if you have like eight R's, you can be like, oh, the heart rate's 80. Super easy way um, to calculate it. Now when you're looking at an EKG and it's like graph paper, like all those little tiny square boxes, each little square box is 0 0.20 of a second. So that's how you would calculate like the PR interval, the QRS duration, and the QT interval. All right. Um, so let's talk about like quick EKG readings when you're looking at the actual EKG. So now you know like how to measure each little thing, um, how to find the rate. So now let's move on to like types of uh, rhythms and how you identify them and labels that we put on certain rhythms. Okay, types of rhythms. There's not that many types of rhythms, so don't get intimidated. The perfect everything's going well rhythm is sinus rhythm. So this means that the heart rate is between about 50 and 100. The PR intervals, totally normal. The QRS duration, totally normal. And there's a little P for every QRS, okay? All right, so that's sinus rhythm. Perfect, looks great. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to. Tachycardia, this means that um, everything looks okay, but the rate is well over 100. Um, some cardiologists will call tachycardia anything over 120. Textbook is 100. So that is tachycardia. Now bradycardia is everything's working well, but it's super slow. So it's anything less than 60 beats per minute. So remember that six second strip, count the, the R's. Oh shoot, there's only four R's. The heart rate's 40. It's a little too slow. So when your heart is beating too slow, you're not getting effectively oxygenated blood to your brain, to the rest of the body. And if it's moving too fast, the chambers cannot pump effectively, open and fill correctly. So it can't work effectively either. Now let's talk about AFib, atrial fibrillation. Oh my gosh, what does that mean? That sounds so complicated. It's not. Atrial fibrillation. So atrial, which is the, the top little chambers of the heart that fill up, um, means that it's like going bonkers, like this. So this means that you have multiple little P's, little blips before the QRS. So it's not P, Q, R, S. P, Q, R, S. It's like P, 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 Q, R, S. P, 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 P. <laughs> and um, the distance between the R's are all wonky. They're not like, oh, perfect. Oh, perfect, it's like, this one's here, this one's close together, this one's here, it's, it's all off, okay? So that's another way to identify atrial fibrillation. Now let's talk about bundle branch block. There is a bundle branch in your heart that um, conducts electricity through the bottom of your heart, like this, like branches, and if there's a block in that electrical conductivity, the QRS is like wider than point um, one, two seconds. So you know it's supposed to be like QRS, nice and tight, QRS. But if it's like QRS, no, no, no. There's a block in the electrical conductivity. There is a bundle branch block, BBB. That's how you identify that, all right? Let's move on to first degree AV block. There's only three degrees, so don't get intimidated. First degree AV block means the PR interval is longer than 0.2 or 0 0.20 seconds. Second degree, is that the um, PR interval is also longer than 0.2, but there's like extra P waves thrown in there, uh, super randomly. And then third degree, or like third degree AV block, or it's also called complete heart block, um, means that there's, first of all, your heart rate's gonna be super slow because there's a huge block in the electrical conductivity. So you're gonna be super slow, definitely less than 50. The R to R's are going to be perfectly equal distance, but you're gonna have extra P's. 
just before the QRSs. Next is V-fib or ventricular fibrillation. It's, it just looks like scribbles. It's like a kid writing on the wall. That's ventricular fibrillation and it is not good. It means the ventricles are not really contracting and emptying and then opening and filling all the way. They're kind of just like, <laughs> like that. It's gonna make no sense. And then the scary one is uh, VTAC as well. Uh, this VTAC means that your heart, it's like well above 150. The monitors are gonna read like 172 something. There's no clear P, QRS, or a T, and they look like tall, skinny mountains. <laughs> like me learning how to write my name in kindergarten, M, M, M. So that is your very, very surface level guide to EKGs. Master all those things that I just talked about and you will be just fine. Obviously, it gets a little bit more complicated, um, but that is the basics. That is what you need to know to really just get by at the very beginning and be able to take care of your patients effectively. And I promise with time and experience, everything will come to you. So thank you so much for watching this video. Like it if you made it this far. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And if you have a video request that you want me to make for you, please put it down below in the comments. I will make a video just for you. If there's something you don't understand in nursing school, or there's something you don't understand as a new nurse, or you need help um, studying and passing the NCLEX, I am here for you. That's the only reason I do any of this, is to help you succeed, um, aside from the regular parameters of school and preceptorship, all right? So thank you so much for watching. Let's be friends on social media. I'll put links to my website and to all my social media down below. I love you, have a good shift. Bye.